Hello and welcome to Sprue Camp Tutorials brought to you by Tormach. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over two different ways of chamfering a model. Um, I have previously done a, a chamfering uh, video, but this particular video, I'm going to show a way that um, maybe many of you are not taking advantage of. So, um, the first thing we are going to do is we have our model, and I have made the the workpiece to be just about the exactly same as the model. So what we're going to do now is we are going to create a finishing 2D contouring routine. Okay, and we were going to do this the traditional way that I, I first showed in my first movie where we're going to go around and double click on the lowest um, edge of the contour that will give us the uh, the furthest out contour all the way around for the uh, chamfer. So we will uh, we'll pick that and we'll come down here to job assignment and pick curve. Okay. Now we will double click on 2D contouring and open up the tool. And for this tool, I already made a quarter inch chamfer mill. You can see it's a quarter inch. It's got a 45 degree contour or 90 degree angle. And uh, there's a 20,000 flat on the tip. So we don't want to mill with the tip, obviously. You'll get a funny little edge. So we have that all set up. Now we'll go to uh, lead in, lead out put a safe level of 50 thousandths and we'll put a approach path of normal uh, about 150 thousandths. Now we'll get into the parameters. Now I happen to know that that chamfer is 50 thousandths, that, that edge is 50 thousandths down from the top of the part. So if we just put it at 50 thousandths and one and click OK and run it. Now when we simulate this, you're going to see, oop, we're going to have to, uh, we're going to pull off that um, radius. we got to take radius compensation off. Sorry about that. And rerun it and turn that off. Okay, so if we run it just like this, Normally, you will notice that the tip is actually following right on the line. And in general, in practices, that would leave a funny little edge on there. So we don't want to actually mill with uh, the, the tip being the reference point. We want to mill on the side of the chamfer mill. So what we are going to do is change the parameters. We're going to add 50 thousandths of stock and we're going to increase this 50 thousandths to a hundred thousandths lower level. Um, that's how it works if you have a 90 degree cutter. So we'll click OK and run. Now you can tell when the cutter is going around it's actually milling Uh, we'll speed it up here a little bit. Let it come around the corner, and you will see that it is milling with the side of the mill, just how we would normally like it to do. Okay, now it, it, let's say you don't have a 90 degree cutter, and you don't want to do the math, and you don't want to, you know. Um, drop at that amount or whatnot, there's a, there's an interesting little um, setting in the tool parameter that can help you with this. So let's go back and let's erase that 2D contour. And we will create a new one, finishing 2D contour. And what we will do now is pick the top edge of 
the chamfer. Click that to make our curve. Okay. Now we'll go into 2D contouring, go to tool. All the way down, we're going to pick the exact same mill that we had before. And we will turn off radius compensation. And what we want to look at here is contact point. <clears throat> and what we're going to do for contact point is put in height. And we're going to put 80 thousandths. So now that edge that we picked should end up contacting that point of the mill. So we're going to put it at 80 thousandths. Now we'll go to lead in, lead out. Do the same thing what we did before, a safe level, an approach path 150 thousandths. And now this, all we need to do is say bottom level, zero. Because it is zero on there. We'll click run. And now we will go to simulate and regenerate it. And I'll click play, and you can see now that this has accomplished the, the same thing as um, widening the stock and lowering the cut. But it's a little simpler because you can choose the contact point of the shaped tool. This can be very useful for other shapes tools. Um, a dovetail cutter or a woodruff cutter that you could set the contact point there and it would be easier to undercut or do an undercut. So uh, hopefully this has helped some of you guys uh, with some projects and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>